Have you ever wondered why so many of our Easter stories present a risen Christ who is unrecognizable even to his best friends? Mary, thinking she has encountered a gardener, or the two disciples on the road to Emmaus who spend an entire afternoon in Bible study with the risen Jesus and see only a stranger, or Paul, who sometime later on the road to Damascus, overwhelmed by a strange light and voice, cries out, who are you? Such resurrection stories are needed so that we understand that it is a strange business, different from the ordinary every day. We need to realize that Jesus Christ comes to us in disguise in our times, perhaps only visible to those who have eyes to see or ears to hear. We are called to have a framework of interpretation if we are to understand Easter in our own time. I, I call it gospel clues. So we turn to the story of Mary and she has her Easter moment when she is named in love by Jesus. Or to the disciples en route to Emmaus who discover Christ when bread is broken and a meal, an ordinary meal, is shared. We need to put on resurrection glasses so that we see the ordinary events of our lives in a new way, almost in a third dimension, a fourth dimension. It's almost like looking at a, a 3D picture with our eyes slightly out of focus. And then all of a sudden, a busy patchwork of color and dots emerges into a new and underlying image. Listen to this poem by Jane Hirschfield, Meeting the Light Completely. And she says, even the long beloved was once an unrecognized stranger. Even so, the chipped lip of a blue glazed cup, blown field of a yellow curtain, might also, flooding and falling, ruin our hearts. A table painted in roses, an empty clothesline. Just this way, the found world always surprises. That is its nature. And then, as lovers have always said, what fools we were not to have seen. Which is what I'm feeling right here at the Christian Resource Center at the heart of Regent Park. What fools we are not to see the presence of the resurrected Christ here, where there is shelter for the homeless and food for the hungry. And I remember the words of Jesus where he said, inasmuch as you do it to the least of these, you do it to me, not for me, not because of me, but to me. When we engage in that kind of work and connection with other people, we will have a resurrection moment. Surely, when a meal is shared as it is here, we are discovering Emmaus made real here in Toronto. Or when people are included, respected, and honored and named, surely this is Mary's story brought into our own times. For you see, Easter is not an event that happened simply a thousand, two thousand years ago. Easter is a verb. Easter is an action that keeps repeating itself over and over. The poet Gerard Manley Hopkins maybe said it best, O oh God, Easter in us, and be a dayspring to the dimness in us. O oh God, Easter in us, and be a dayspring to the dimness in us. That's my Easter wish for you, for me, for all of us. Have a blessed and real and very present Easter. Amen.